This video will demonstrate how to prepare and electronically file a subsequent filing for general civil in Orange County, California. So once you've registered and logged in with TurboCourt and have indicated you want to file for general civil in California and then selected that you're going to be filing in Orange County, go ahead and click Next. And there are three different options for filing into an existing case. It could be an unlimited civil case, a limited unlawful detainer case, or some other limited civil case. And so for this demonstration, we'll go ahead and indicate a limited civil case other than UD. And now what we need to do is find that existing case in the court's database so that we can file into it. Now there are several ways to find existing cases. First off, we can search by the court that uh, is handling that particular case. That's one option. Uh, we could also search by case number, case name, or any of the participants, be they an organization or a person. So for example, if we want to work with case name, and I can just type in a part of that case name, and my choices are the case name starts with that word, it's an exact match, or the safest one typically is a partial search, which means that word exists anywhere in the case name but really you can search however is appropriate. And let's go ahead and click search. And what's actually happening right now, even though this is a demonstration database, it's talking to the Superior Court's demonstration database and actually searching for existing cases with Castro in them. And sure enough, there are quite a few. And here's the one that I'm particularly wanting is DSI versus Castro. It's a breach of contract warranty case. And so there's the case number. I'll go ahead and click on that and it's now showing me certain details about that case. I can even view the case participants. If there were attorneys involved, it'll also show them here as well. Yes, that's who, uh, that's the case that I want. And in this scenario, for demonstration purposes, I've logged in as an attorney, and I'm going to be representing the defendant. So I close that window. I'm good to go. I click Next. And once again, TurboCourt is smart enough to know that I've already logged in as an attorney and it wants to know whether I'm a sole practitioner or working in a law firm. <clears throat> and so I'm going to indicate that I'm a sole practitioner. And so it wants to know my name first and last. And what we're going to do now is again make a, an electronic call to the courts database to see if they have any record of an attorney Flint Zide in their database with a case management system ID number and then if so they will associate that with my login and with this particular filing. So let's go ahead and do that. Click Next and we'll see uh, if they have any record of me. Okay so we have some results returned and of course like I said these are demonstration databases so uh, as you can see here, we've got actually three different records for uh, Flint Zide. That wouldn't normally happen. Uh, but for purposes of this demonstration, let's take a look at what we have here, uh, because there could in fact be people with the same names. And so you want to make sure we're gra you're grabbing the right one. Uh, each one has their own unique case management ID number from the court uh, with an address and so forth. Uh, if I see those names there, but they're not me, uh, then I can say not in the list. And at that point, the system will automatically generate a case management uh, number for me from the court, which it'll then associate with my registration and, of course, with this filing. But let's just go ahead and say that this third one here is, in fact, me. So let's click Next. And again, this is a demonstration database, so we've got a little bit of cleanup to do here. Um, Flint has apparently not electronically filed before. Maybe he's filed on paper. Uh, so they have record of him that way, but he's never electronically filed, so we've got a little bit of cleanup here to do. Normally, um, you probably wouldn't be doing this, but it's simple enough to do. And once I've done this and it saves that, now every time I log in, it'll remember all of this information and I won't need to do this a second time. I click Next, and so now I'm ready to file my subsequent filing. So it reminds me of the case number that I'm filing into. I click Next. Once again, it's providing the details. 
and so uh, what parties am I filing for? Now I can indicate that I'm actually adding new case participants or I can indicate I'm filing for Ramiro, Castro, or DSI Realty. Uh, I could also, if in fact if there were many parties listed here, I could say I represent all of the defendants and they would all be checked. Uh, so that's another way of doing it. Okay, so Ramiro Castro is my client. He's the defendant. I click Next. This was a claim that did not exceed $10,000. Uh, it knows that Ramiro is a defendant. There is no alternate name such as an AKA for Ramiro, so I'll simply skip that. Uh, is the first appearance fee required? Is this the first time we are responding? And in fact, it is. And so we have one filer who needs to pay their first appearance fee. Is the case complex? No, it is not. And what type of a document are we providing? So first I'm going to select the category and I'm going to select first papers and so here we have all of the different types of first papers and I'm going to select the first one here answer general denial or answer to complaint answer to complaint first, first papers whatever is appropriate actually let's go with that one and click Next. Now do I want to attach any additional documents? And if you missed this previously, you can attach up to five additional documents from different categories. So for example, you might have exhibits or a brief that you also want to submit along with your answer. So I could select Exhibit List and then say I'm attaching that as well. Let's just go ahead and do that and I'm done. I click Next. TurboCourt will analyze all of my responses and we now have a completed subsequent filing. It has not yet been electronically delivered but it's completed. It has been given a unique TurboCourt form set number. We already know the case number and we do have filing fees because it is my first paper. It's an answer or other first paper for under 10,000. So I have fees there along with the application and convenience fee. Now because this is a subsequent filing there's actually two different services available. There is e-file only which as we can see has one application fee and I'll electronically submit my documents to the court or I can not only electronically file them but I can also electronically serve them to the other parties uh, that has a different application fee. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got our standard instructions for California Rules of Court and we have the two documents that I said I was going to be filing, my answer to complaint as well as my exhibit list. And as you can see the exhibit list is set indented. It's like a child document. It's a subsequent or subsidiary document of the main answer. So we need to attach both of those. So I click Attach. It must be a PDF. It already shows the document type as answer to complaint. I can use that same name for the title description or I can override that or add to it. And now I simply click Browse and select whatever document I need to. Click Save. TurboCourt analyzes that to make sure that it's a legitimate PDF and now I'm going to attach my exhibit list once again a PDF call it exhibit A come up with some other um, document that I've prepared click Save and so now I have my two documents already attached now if I need to I can view those to make sure I've done the right ones if I realize I didn't do the right one or if I decided to make some changes to it and I want to reattach it I can simply click edit and uh, reattach just hit browse and, and attach a different file uh, I can just remove it altogether until I'm ready to attach a different file but once my documents are attached I'm ready to proceed to the next step now this is for e-service 
So I've opted for the e-service. Now again, if I decided to change my mind, I simply can change over to this other tab and skip this additional step and just go with e-filing. But no, I'd like to do e-service. Okay, so here is where I can put in the names and email addresses of the parties to be served. Now there are several ways in which I can add recipients for e-service. I can simply manually enter them. Now it just so happens I know the name of the person over at DSI to receive service. I can optionally list their role or any comments. If it turns out that we've been doing multiple filings on this case, there may already be an e-service list. Uh, this is a situation that is not the case right now because this is my first filing. Uh, but let's say I do another filing after this and another and of course I've already got this e-service list that I'm creating right now then I can actually click view the case e-service list and simply select the people that are already in this list I don't have to retype their names each time for each filing so we basically save the e-service list and you can add to it over time um, and it just allows you to continue to do more filings and electronically serve and simply select their names rather than retyping them each time. Okay, one thing we need to do is make sure we say that the recipients have consented in writing to e-service. That's part of the rules for uh, electronic service in California. And if I want to add more, I can simply click add new recipient manually and it adds an additional row. And I can continue to add folks, but let's just go ahead and remove that one. And now I'm ready to proceed with the final step for e-filing. And of course, I'll be notified of uh, this filing being submitted to the court. I'll be notified once it's been uh, processed and accepted. I can send those notifications to colleagues, to co-counsel, to my boss, to my client, so that uh, everybody is kept abreast of the status of this particular filing if I want to. And so I'd simply add multiple email addresses in here to whomever I wanted to also receive those notifications. Okay, we'll go ahead and um, agree to the terms and conditions and I put my name in for electronic digital signature and I'm ready to e-file. Okay, so in this scenario I've never paid before and so it wants to know how do I want to pay. I can pay with PayPal, I can put in a credit or debit card number, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Alright, so I've gone ahead and put in a pseudo credit card number for demonstration purposes with my information. I'll click pay now and we'll wait and see if our transaction is successful. So this will go through PayPal even though it's a credit card and we have a successful payment. So I have a payment transaction ID. It shows me the credit card that I paid with. I can view the payment receipt with all of the details of the filing along with all of the fees details. I can print this for a hard copy or simply come back to it whenever I want to view it on screen. And I have the ability to save this credit card and give it a nickname or a tokenized name. And once I save that, now I can reuse it over and over again for other TurboCourt filings. Uh, without having to re-enter that information. Also, uh, if I'm part of an organization and I want, I can make this card available to certain other people that are logged in and registered with TurboCourt uh, so that they can also use that same credit card for their TurboCourt filings. Uh, they, of course, won't see the credit card number, but they'll have access to it and then I can choose to whom I want to give access to or not. So let's go ahead and say, yes, I'm going to go ahead and save this credit card nickname and then view the filing. 
OK. So it went from a completed filing to a delivered filing. It shows the delivery date and time. I now have a court transaction number uh, showing that they did, in fact, receive my filing. I can see the documents that I have submitted. Once again, I can look at my payments. I can go to messages. And sure enough, I already have a message. And it shows that documents have been sent to the Superior Court. Here's the transaction number they've given to me. And I'll be notified again once documents have been processed. And of course, if I decided to receive email notification as well as this internal notification, I will have gotten this notification by email as well. If I set up courtesy notifications for co-counsel or my client or my supervisor, they also would have received this notification. So I'll go ahead and mark that as having been read. And if I look at the e-service tab, it will show me that Frank Morgan was sent the request for e-service. And right now it's pending. That means that he has not yet opened up his email and um, looked at the documents. But once that happens, I can go here and see the exact date and time that he's accepted e-service of these documents. If for any reason it stays in pending status for several days uh, and I'm concerned that he didn't get the email, maybe he went into a spam folder or maybe I've contacted him and he says, oh, I don't remember getting it, fine, I'll just go ahead and check that and resend him that e-service email and there'll be a complete history of everything that happens with regards to this e-service. Also, even though I've already electronically submitted the documents, I can uh, add new recipients and then send them the e-service notification right away so that they can also uh, be electronically served these documents uh, so I can do that after the fact. And so there you go. This is how you can do a subsequent filing for General Civil in Orange County uh, on any of the cases they have in their system and then opt to electronically file or electronically file with e-service.